Many articles have been released about the great things Copilot PCs can do for you. Well, mostly logging everything that you do and storing it in a, well, mostly insecure format, which, to be fair, Windows is working on after plenty of backlash. But there are some things your Copilot PC can't do, and it's curious that only one nation has been told about that, while everybody has been said, what a great, powerful group of PCs this is. So we are going to examine an article from Tom's Guide today about what that is. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content where you, we teach you how and why to switch to Linux, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Give us a like down there. And from now, we're going to talk about what your Copilot PC can't do. Namely, it may not be able to run your favorite pieces of software. See, the Copilot PCs are the first of the high powered ARM processors coming out. And to be completely fair, this is a modern issue that will most likely be resolved pretty quickly as the uptick of the ARM processors is uh, occurs. The challenge here is that Copilot Plus with the recall application is so controversial, there's not a lot of push for people really wanting this at this point in time, which is very sad because ARM processors are more efficient in many ways. And this is actually a good technology that should be embraced as far as the ARM processor itself. Now, the NPU attached to the Snapdragon X is not quite so good, and the recall system should not even be installed on a computer unless you explicitly want it. It shouldn't be there in the background waiting for the toggle switch, which invariably Windows will turn on accidentally some future time. But what we want to look at here is this article from Tom's Guide. Now, this is out a couple weeks ago, but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it. And I did want to mention this. So Copilot PCs won't run various apps and games at launch. This is not your typical processor, your typical 64-bit Intel or AMD-based processor. This is an ARM processor. Now, ARM processors are very good. Apple proved that with a silicone. Those processors are really good. Raspberry Pi are moving along. In fact, we're doing a video here tomorrow on the Raspberry Pi 5 and how good of a system that actually is as I've been doing it my work for web design in production now for six weeks. You do not even know that thing is a Raspberry Pi. It is so good. ARM processor with some more modifications, making it a little bit better. Well, that's what they're doing with the Snapdragon. The problem is applications compiled for your traditional computers do not work on ARM systems unless they are explicitly compiled for that. Now, some programming languages like Rust, which is being heavily promoted right now, is a system that makes the compiling a lot easier, whereas some older applications would take a lot of extra work to get them running with the ARM architecture. Now, in this case here, what is most curious is that as these computers are starting to roll out, these Copilot Plus PCs are rolling out, only one country, and that being South Korea, where these chips are being manufactured, are being warned that many of your favorite applications may not actually run on them. So what they're doing here is, uh, and this press release only went out in Korea, and the original article is only in Korea, have a look at some of these applications, which it cannot do. There's a compatibility notice, states that security programs, these are mostly Avast and Kapersky, of course Kapersky is now banned in the United States, but Avast will not work on these systems. Additionally, uh, several pieces of Adobe software won't, some of it will, some will not, After Effects, Illustrator, um, I don't know about Photoshop. I think Photoshop will run just fine because they resolve that for the silicone. But a lot of your a lot of your your not most common but still heavily used, particularly in video content stuff from Adobe, will not work. Google Drive doesn't work. That's fascinating. So if you actually look at the compatibility notice, however, oh, page is blocked. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, proceed with that one. So uh, uBlock Origin to the rescue. This is actually from, I believe this is from the actual Samsung event, but this is all, of course, in Korean, which I really can't read. Well, hey, there's a little bit of English up here. So I don't know, this, oh, this, this must be it. 
Um, these are things that will not work. So there are some English ones. A vast cleanup, a vast security line VPN, a vast driver, uh, Fort Client, Kapersky, antivirus, Webroot, security anywhere, antivirus, VirtualBox headless front end, Adobe InDesign, Illustrator, After Effects, and Adobe Premiere Pro, League of Legends, FC, Battlegrounds, Sudden Attack, um, all of these guys here are on the list of things that will not work. Now, they have said Adobe Illustrator should be coming at the end of the year. So the challenge that we have is that we have computers, which they're pushing out as being the latest and the greatest, that some people who do not follow the development of computers and know the difference between an ARM and an Intel-based processor are going to get these computers and they may not be able to run some of the software that you want to run. These are some of those reasons why Windows is pushing things out too fast in ways that really probably they shouldn't be doing quite this way. So the uh, Samsung has asked the app developers for improvements and will check on app improvement schedules to provide continual updates. Curiously, though, only the Korean uh, areas receive these warnings, but these are global warnings that are going to be impacting all of your various computers. So as you are looking at picking up one of these new Copilot Plus PCs, which is not just the Snapdragon one, uh, the Omnibus, um, Omnibook, uh, excuse me, <laughs> exit Omnibus, or, you know, the spending bill, <laughs> the uh, HP Omnibook X and the Asus VivoBook S15, uh, these would also be under this as they all have that ARM architecture. So as soon as the application developers will get those guys working, then we're going to have better uh, computers out there. But in the meantime, just be aware of that, that when these new shiny Windows computers runs out, take stock of the applications you need first, check those press releases, and make sure your applications will work before you move over. Hey, or hey, why don't you just come on over, switch to Linux, and look at free and open source software. And I know you can't play some of those games on Linux, but a few of those games listed you can. Some of the other applications mentioned there, there are other alternatives. So have a look at our videos about slowly switching to Linux. It might be something you want to think about doing, if not for all of your life, at least some of your life, maybe more of your personal life. You should really consider that because it is a better way that you can have full control of your operating system and that no big company is going to be taking your data, storing it inside of your cloud, uh, inside of their cloud, utilizing your data against you, or, hey, cramming ads in every corner of the world as more places are starting to get ads now. Maybe we'll talk about that video here sometime soon. But uh, with that, just be aware of these changes that are coming down the pipeline. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this or other Linux tutorials or things like that. We will go ahead and uh, have a continuous rolling cycle of Windows and Linux tutorials and why to switch to Linux and uh, some of the news things happening in the world as we move along as well. With that, folks, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and have a look at the closing video here, slowly switching to Linux, basically your plan for starting to switch to Linux without going cold turkey. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.